Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we are taking a look at the Affliction Warlock on the Shadowlands beta. Before we get started, I do want to mention that I have my Patreon set up once again, so if you want to support me and like the content I do, uh, make sure to check it out. The link to it is in the description box. But in this video, we will take a look at all the Affliction Warlock changes, which from what I've been told and played with, uh, do seem to be quite good. I will take a look at the talents, the talent changes, legendaries, and conduits, as well as the gameplay. Please keep in mind that I am not an Affliction Warlock connoisseur. I only picked up this spec recently, uh, I haven't played it since like Cataclysm, but I will be playing it as an alt in Shadowlands, so it was time for me to learn it. Without further ado, let's get started. And first up, let's take a look at the baseline abilities that got changed. So first of all, we got some old flavor back to the class through curses. So they added Curse of Exhaustion that reduces movement speed, Curse of Tongues um, that increases the spellcasting time of enemies by 30%, and we got Curse of Weakness that increases the time that enemies take between attacks by 20%. So overall, nothing super impactful, but it's nice to have, and there are niche situations where these are actually quite good. Uh, for example, specific bosses do get affected by Curse of Tongues, um, so it's nice to see that return to the Warlock. Then another big change is that Demonic Circle is now baseline. So this was previously a talent in our CC row, but is now a baseline ability. Then we also have a not-so-welcome change. Pet Summons now take 6 seconds. So if you just want to summon a pet, it's going to take you a while. But luckily they did add a spell um, called Fell Domination. It's a 3 minute cooldown and it causes your next spell cast or next pet summon to take 5.5 seconds less. So if you activate it, then go to summon a pet, it will be nearly instant. Basically just a global cooldown. Um, the downside is that it is a 3 minute cooldown, so especially in PvP for example, your pet might not survive 3 minutes, and resummoning one that takes 6 seconds, um, probably around 5.5 with haste, is going to be quite annoying. But then we also get another ability that was a little controversial when they added it back, and that is Ritual of Doom. So Ritual of Doom has a 1 hour cooldown, and... It works very similarly to how it did in the past when Warlock had it. You essentially need to sacrifice a random participant. You need four people to do it uh, besides yourself. And then you will summon a Doom Guard, I believe, which then you can enslave to fight for you. So I'm not sure how this is tuned. I haven't really talked to Warlocks about this ability in particular too much, but I really hope that it's literally just a flavor ability and it's going to provide the minimal damage increase every hour um, because if it provides any significant damage, that's going to be absolutely miserable for Mythic Raiding. But then we also got some changes that are quite good. So we got a new ability called Malefic Rapture and this is our new Shard Spender. So it costs one soul shard to cast and it causes all your periodic damage effects, uh, so dots on your targets to flare up or to erupt causing damage. And the more dots you have on a target, the more damage it does. And this is good on both single target and on AoE because obviously on AoE it works similarly to how DK Epidemic works. Every single target that has a dot on it will take damage. So. It's a nice little spender, um, I like it a lot, but more importantly, Unstable Affliction got reworked to compensate for the addition of a shard spender. Um, it no longer costs soul shards to cast, however, they did change it to only allow one Unstable Affliction per target. Previously, you could stack up to four, that is completely gone. Now you can only cast one Unstable Affliction per target, um, and they also added a new effect to it that will... Um, generate a soul shard if a target dies with unstable affliction on it and they also increase the duration of unstable affliction so you won't have to cast it as often as you used to. So overall 
these changes just make Affliction Warlock have a lot less ramp time than they did in the past. So previously when you had to apply all your dots, then you had to cast four UAs. It was just a lot of stuff that you needed to press before you started doing actual damage. So with the rework, it makes um, Affliction a lot more bearable, especially when you have multiple targets that you need to dot up. Um, and the addition of Malefic Rapture also increases our AoE damage quite a lot, which Affliction Warlock previously kind of struggled in, um, unless it was like extended AoE. Next, looking at the talents, we have quite a few changes. In the first tier, Nightfall has been buffed previously. Um, it didn't matter how many corruptions you had out, the increased proc rate was just based on having a single corruption out. So now you will actually get way more procs if you have more corruptions on multiple targets. Then a new talent that was added is Inevitable Demise. Damaging an enemy with Agony increases the damage of your next drain life by 15%. This effect stacks up to 50 times. So this one immediately might be quite strong in PvP. Um, having a more powerful drain life, and we also have some legendaries that might synergize with this. Um, it makes your drain life be super strong and the more targets you have the faster you can stack it up um i don't really know if this is going to be used outside of pvp just because of the current meta the affliction warlock has with the drain soul legendary but in pvp this might be quite strong then in the second tier right in agony got changed um, Agony's damage starts at 4 stacks and it ramps up to 18 stacks, so they just changed how the talent works. Then in the next tier we have Dark Pact that was slightly buffed. It will sacrifice 20% of your maximum health for 250% shield um, and you also gain an additional amount, but I'm not exactly sure what it is since the tooltip is bugged. Then in the level 35 row, Sow the Seeds got a slight buff. So now it will apply Seed of Corruption to two additional nearby enemies instead of one. Um, this is just an overall buff to the talent. Um, then in the next tier, Howl of Terror makes a return to Affliction Warlock. It's a 40 second cooldown. Um, let loose a terrifying howl, causing five enemies within 10 yards to flee in fear. Disorienting them for 20 seconds, damage may cancel the effect. So since Demonic Circle got moved to baseline, this is the talent that replaced it. And it makes sense because all three of these talents are different forms of CC. So it's cool to have that in the row. Then in the level 45 row, Dark Caller is a new talent that we get. Um, it causes your Dark Lair to have a 60 second reduced cooldown, which means that it will perfectly line up with your Dark Soul. Um, and that's nothing to be laughed at. Like Dark Lair lining up with Dark Soul is pretty big. Um, I don't know if it will see too much use in raiding, but for Mythic Plus in particular, it's quite a nice talent to have. Another change that I suppose is both a talent and a baseline ability change is that Shadow Embrace is no longer a talent, um, as you can tell. Um, it's now a, a baseline passive ability, and it works the same way as it did in the past. So those are the major talent and class changes. Uh, next, we can take a look at the legendaries. So for legendaries, I'm only going to talk about the ones that might actually see some play in either Mythic Plus, Raiding, or potentially PvP. First up, Claw of Enderath. This one is the one that might see some use in PvP. Drain life channels 100% faster and returns health 100% faster. So for PvP, where as an Affliction Warlock you're drain lifing probably quite a bit, um, this might be good, but that's I think the only scenario where it's going to see any use. Then we have Sacralash. So this makes a return from Legion. Corruption damage is increased by 15%, and any target affected by your corruption also has their movement speed slowed by 60%. So this paired with Absolute Corruption is quite a strong talent. Um, we'll see if Mythic Plus allows any Legion style pulls where you actually need the slow effect. Um, but if it does, or even in PvP, this might be quite powerful. Then we have Malefic Wrath, which is probably the strongest single target legendary that Affliction Warlock has access to right now. 
Malefic Rapture increases the damage of your Drain Soul by 25% for 8 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. So with this Legendary, Drain Soul becomes your top damage dealing ability on single target by a landslide. And when playing this Legendary, your rotation essentially changes to maintaining Malefic Wrath uptime as much as you can, and then just Drain Soul with 3 stacks. So it's going to cause your Drain Soul to do a ton of damage, and especially when you get to execute range, your Drain Soul will be even more insane. So this Legendary is completely busted currently um, on Affliction. We'll see if it gets nerfed or changed in any way, but currently it is the best choice on single target. Then we have Wrath of Consumption. Uh, this works similarly to how it did in Legion. Targets that die with your Agony applied to them grant you Wrath of Consumption, increasing all periodic damage dealt by 5% for 20 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. So if you stack this up all the way, it's 25% increased uh, dot damage, but you need to have a target die with your Agony on them. That's the change from Legion. Uh, back in Legion, whenever a target died, you got a stack. So now you actually need to have an Agony on them in order to get a stack. If you're able to keep this buff up, it is quite powerful. So potentially for Mythic Plus, it might see some play. Next, let's talk about the Covenants and the Covenant abilities. So for Kyrian, we have Scouring Tight. This is a 40 second cooldown, deal arcane damage instantly and damage over 18 seconds. If the enemy dies while affecting by Scouring Tight, you generate 5 soul shards. If they survive, Scouring Tight cooldown is refreshed, so you can essentially keep it up permanently on single target if the target doesn't die. And then on situations where the targets do die, like Mythic Plus or if a boss uh, spawns adds that you can apply this dot to, then you get 5 soul shards. So, on paper, it might seem pretty cool. Um, I think the damage is currently a little bit too undertuned to be usable, but if they tune it correctly where you're able to keep this up 100% of the time um, and it does actually a decent amount of damage, it might be quite strong on single target. And then in Mythic Plus, where you're generating 5 shards every time you apply this to something that you kill, uh, might be quite strong. So currently the only reason we don't play this is because the Necrolord one synergizes quite well with our Legendary and our Drain Soul talent, but I will talk about that in a second. Then for Venthyr we have Impending Catastrophe, it's a 1 minute cooldown. Call forth a cloud of chaotic anime that travels to the target enemy. Dealing shadow damage to enemies in its path, when the anime reaches the target it explodes inflicting either Curse of Weakness or Curse of Tongues. This is completely random um, and dealing shadow damage over 12 seconds to all nearby enemies. So overall, this is kind of our AoE option. Um, I think out of all four covenants, this might be the best on just big pools. But in Shadowlands in particular, typically we're not seeing pools big enough where this would overtake some of the other covenants. Then for Necrolord, which is currently the best option that we can take, we have Decimating Bolt. It's a 45 second cooldown. Hurl bolts of Decimating Magic at your target, dealing shadow damage and increasing the damage of your next 3 shadow bolts or drain souls by 200%. Decimating Bolt's damage and the bonus to shadow bolt or drain soul both increase as your target's health decreases. So this Covenant ability paired with the Legendary that increases um, our Drain Soul's damage by 75% is absolutely insane. Um, it makes your Drain Soul do so much damage on single target. Um, and you're only able to cast this every 45 seconds, but it does apply to a full Drain Soul. So you can cast three full Drain Souls that are affected by the damage amp that you get from this uh, Covenant ability and the damage amp that you get from the Legendary and it will deal an absolutely insane amount of damage. So currently this one is super strong for raiding. This also has the added benefit that the further you go into a fight, the stronger your Drain Souls become. So once you get into Execute and you get the boss to like 10% health, your Drain Souls will make up probably about 70% of your damage. So Overall, this synergizes greatly with the kit and the legendaries that we have available.
Then for Night Fae, we have Soul Rot. Wither away all life force of your current target and up to three additional targets nearby, causing them to suffer nature damage over eight seconds. For the next eight seconds, casting Drain Life will cause you to also drain life from enemies affected by your Soul Rot, and Drain Life will not consume any mana. This costs 20% of your maximum health to cast. This Covenant ability pairs really nicely with Inevitable Demise, and Inevitable Demise, just by design, is much more beneficial on multiple targets. Same with Soul Rot. Uh, it only applies to three targets, however, imagine Drain Lifing three targets and you get a huge amount of extra damage and extra health from both of them. Next, let's take a quick look at the conduits. First up, we have Cold Embrace. Increase the effectiveness of Shadow Embrace by 33%. So this just means that instead of applying 3% increase, it's going to be a 4%. So you can stack it up to 12 instead of 9. Overall, I think it's a decent conduit. Then we have Focused uh, Malignancy. Malefic Rapture deals 25% increased damage to targets suffering from Unstable Affliction. So this just encourages you to keep Unstable Affliction on either your primary target or as many targets as you can. And generally, that's a good idea anyway, since whenever a target dies, you do get a Soul Shard back. So keeping Unstable Affliction up, this just encourages it even more. Next we have Corrupting Leer, Agony and Unstable Affliction have a 3% chance to reduce the cooldown of Summon Dark Leer by 5 seconds, and this does scale with Conduit Rank. So on single target, where you typically don't take the Dark Caller talent, um, it might be good if you're able to get the CD of Dark Leer close enough to Dark Soul, but then again, um, it's going to depend on how often this actually procs. I haven't played around with it too much to test on what I can get the Dark Lair cooldown down to, but if it's anywhere near 2 minutes, then this is quite good. Um, but I assume the higher Conduit rank you have, the better this becomes. Next we have Rolling Agony. Uh, increases the duration of Agony by 4 seconds, scaling with Conduit rank. So this just makes it so you don't have to press Agony as often as you normally would. Um, overall, I'm not exactly sure how strong this is, but it just reduces the number or it reduces the upkeep that you need to do. So let's talk a little bit about how the spec actually plays. On single target, Affliction Warlock becomes a delicate balance of keeping up all your dots and keeping up three stacks of Malefic Rapture so you can drain soul um, as much as you can in those 75% increased damage windows. Um, but overall, I like the way it plays a lot. It feels really smooth. Um, at its core, if you like how Affliction plays in BFA, then you will like how it plays in Shadowlands. Because the only changes that they really made to the spec is reduce its ramp time. You no longer have to ramp up over you know, casting the four UAs. Instead, you can just apply all your dots and then you can go into doing damage um, right after by stacking up your Malefic Rapture um, with your Legendary and then just drain souling. And then from there it just becomes a game of keep refreshing your dots before they fall off and make sure you keep up your Malefic Wrath buff so that your drain souls can hit for a lot more. Um, also, Decimating Bolt on single target lines up with Phantom Singularity, so it provides a nice little bit of extra burst that we didn't really have before. Um, or on AoE, since Vial Taint is a 20 second cooldown, every other Vial Taint pretty much lines up with Decimating Bolt, so that you have a choice right there too. Um, and it also increases our burst damage a little bit, which is something that I feel like has been lacking from Affliction Warlock. Uh, just because it was apply all your dots and then maintain them and you kind of just dealt the same amount of damage. And then whenever your, your Dark Lair and your Dark Soul were up, you kind of did more damage. But then you didn't have any smaller burst windows uh, that you had in between your 2 minute or 3 minute cooldowns. So overall I think it's a step in the right direction. I also like that Affliction Warlock has quite a lot of options when it comes to talents. Um, there are a lot that are situationally good. For example, Haunt is great on single target. Dark Caller makes AoE feel so much more rewarding since 
your Dark Soul will line up with your Dark Lair. Um, the only row that I am not entirely sure about is in the level 35 row where you have Soda Seeds, Phantom Singularity, and Vile Taint. Currently, it's just Phantom Singularity on single target, Vile Taint on AoE. So Soda Seeds doesn't really have a place um, in the builds that I've played or I've, I've been told so far. Um, it would be nice to see if Soda Seeds, maybe they removed the effect where it embedded additional seeds and just changed it to apply both your dots. So it, it should apply both Agony and Corruption. And that was something that I also noticed in the Wowhead article that they mentioned. Uh, that was the first thing that caught my eye when I started playing the Semitic Plus. Like, it would be so nice if Seed of Corruption actually applied both my dots so I didn't have to go around manually applying it to every single one of the targets. And then all you, had to, all you would have to worry about is casting UAs on everything. Um, another talent in the last row I don't quite like is Soul Conduit. It just seems like a super boring design. Um, I wish they added something more, more active to, the, to this row. Misery is obviously a really good talent. Uh, Creeping Death is pretty good on Cleave and in situations where you're going to be multi-dotting. But then Soul Conduit just doesn't really seem to fit anymore with the spec. Um, so I wish they kind of redesigned this, either make it something that's like really strong on AoE or make it something that interacts with our kit a little bit better. Those are my overall thoughts on the Affliction Warlock. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this spec. Um, I will be playing it as an alt, so I'm curious to see what people think of it. Um, this was the first time that I've played Affliction in a long time, um, since like Cataclysm. So for me, this spec feels quite smooth to play and a lot of fun compared to some of the other range that I've played in the past. So let me know in the comment section below what you think about it. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.